Hello, English 4100. This is a slideshow that discusses the argument analysis paper. If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to stop the slideshow and print out a copy of the argument analysis and read it, and then listen to the narration over these slides so that you'll have a better understanding of the argument analysis. You need to keep this um, assignment prompt with you when you're writing. I really rely on these and use them, and I think that they can be very helpful for you in accomplishing the goals of the assignment. The goals of this assignment is for you to locate an argument, for you to use rhetorical concepts in the process of, ana of analyzing the argument, for you to um, use the argument that you've chosen as evidence, to take evidence from the text to use, and to provide research and support for your conclusions. And I'll break these down a little bit in the coming slides. First, what is analysis? Analysis is using criteria to screen something to reach some sort of a conclusion about that thing. I gave the example in the, assi in the assignment sheet itself of uh, screens for blood. So you can go in and look for the iron level in blood and run that test and find out that answer. But when you run that test, you're only going to find out the answer to that one question. So it's very important what test or what, or what criteria you use uh, to analyze something. Because screens bring some things into focus, but make other things go into the background. So the first thing you're going to want to do is establish criteria. The criteria are going to come from the readings that I will post on Blackboard for uh, that are from uh, Gerard Hauser's text. There are two chapters, chapter one and chapter three. You need to read both of those chapters. We are going to be um, working with those on online in the discussion board in week two of this unit. So I encourage you to get the reading done and start it right away. The criteria will come from keywords in Hauser's uh, text. Uh, keywords are, are key vocabulary concepts um, that we'll use, and we'll talk about what some of those are. You'll need to establish which of those keywords you're going to use to analyze the argument. You'll need to be able to understand what, which, what each of those keywords mean. And you'll need to use criteria to reach some sort of conclusion about the argument that you're assessing. The argument that you're going to analyze um, will be something that you choose. So another piece of footwork you need to take care of is to go out and choose an example of argumentation. We're going to talk about what counts for an argument in week two. Hauser talks about rhetorical events. So he sees rhetoric as eventful. Um, that opens the door for uh, something like a protest to count as uh, a rhetorical or event or, or an argument. So there are a variety of approaches to choosing something for this assignment, which we'll talk about um, a little bit more. The important thing right now to know is that analysis, in my mind, is using rhetorical concepts that is that are listed, that are given in our reading, establishing that you understand those um, as you're writing your paper, and using those criteria to reach a conclusion. So we'll talk a little bit more about how we can do that as things go on. Now, in the assignment, I tell you that you need to have evidence. And I've titled this slide, What Counts as Evidence? Because not all disciplines consider the same things evidence. So I come from the English department. And in the English department, we consider that narrative is a legitimate form of finding evidence. Um, in this particular case, I think the thing that is unique to English is that text itself is evidence. So if you say that somebody has an abrasive tone, in order to provide evidence for that, you would want to give examples of words and phrases used in the argument 
that strike you as abrasive. So evidence isn't always something that you see under a microscope or that everyone in the world would agree on. It's not always facts. However, facts, <clears throat> excuse me, facts and history do count as evidence. Um, as you'll read in Hauser, rhetorical events come from someplace. So when you see a protest, some crisis has precipitated that protest. And it's important to understand the crisis in order to make a judgment about the rhetorical event that, that follows it. So facts and history, context in general, are very, very important. In addition, expert perspectives are important. So in the case of, of this particular assignment, I'm asking you to choose criteria or keywords from Hauser. And one way that you can establish that you understand these keywords is to quote from Hauser himself. So I can imagine that you would, uh, that you would use a support in this assignment, at least three different kinds of evidence. One, evidence from Hauser's text to support your understanding of the criteria. Secondly, evidence from the text or event that you choose itself. And then third, evidence from the facts and history and context of the event. Information that your reader needs to know in order to understand the rhetorical event. If you have any questions about what counts as evidence, just work with me on it. I would be glad to clarify. The nitty-gritty details about this assignment, you have a deadline, um, which I actually don't think I have in front of me. It's on the syllabus. Um, for this, you need to meet those deadlines, or else you need to contact me about why you can't. I've given you a link for this. With regard to the length, don't worry too much about the length. I don't worry that much about the length. Um, usually what happens is during the process of revision, things get longer, almost always. Um, you'll need more support. Um, you'll need more evidence. You'll need more quotations. And so the length will um, kind of solve itself. So don't write additional sentences just to get your length. Um, have a reason for anything that you add. If you have any questions about how to develop um, your argument better, I'd rather talk about developing your argument than I would about how to make your paper longer. Conventions matter whether we like it or not, so spelling, grammar, all that kind of stuff um, needs to be in place. Again, it's not of the primary importance to me. I will note if you have errors and if you have significant errors, you'll really need to work on those before your uh, final uh, revision. Finally, style guides. We have a variety of people in the class. Not all of you are English majors. Some of you are from other majors, and so you might use other style guides. English majors are most familiar with MLA. And other majors tend to be most familiar with APA. You can use any style guide that you want. Just use it correctly and use it consistently. This has been a very short overview of the assignment. I hope that you'll send me questions via email so that I can post answers to those. And as I mentioned and will continue to mention, I hope that we can have synchronous um, optional uh, meetings that you can attend, that we can uh, talk in a live, you know, fashion so that I can answer your questions as they arise. I hope you have a good day. Take good care.